Good morning, children. I am missing each one of you, each one of my kindergartners and first graders in my godly play class. It is really a sad thing that we can't be together at church, but Miss Jenny reached out to all the Sunday school teachers and asked us if we would like to teach a lesson by video so that we could connect with our children even though we're not with you at church on Sundays. And I was so excited about that opportunity because I've been missing you. I have been praying for you and your families. And I um, am excited today on this beautiful spring morning um, to get to say hello to you and share a lesson with you about God's love for us and um, ways we can show our love for Him. I'm sitting in my backyard today, and if you listen, you can hear the birds singing, you can see the wind is blowing, you may hear my chickens and my donkeys in the back fence um, making all kinds of noise, but I am just enjoying this beautiful day and hope that each one of you will be able to do the same. So I want you to um, imagine that we are in our Godly Play classroom today. And before we start our story, we always um, get in a big circle. Each child, you're on your mat, keeping your hands to yourselves. And we always open with sharing um, things from our week that we're excited about or that we're worried about. And um, we can't do that today because I don't have a way to talk with you, but know that I um, and thinking about you and praying for you even though we can't share those concerns But we can open our time together with prayer just like we always do So I'm gonna ask each one of you to please close your eyes and fold your hands and let's pray Gracious and loving God we thank you for this beautiful day of spring We thank you for the sunshine that makes our bodies feel warm and comfortable we thank you for the birds that are singing and the breezes that are blowing. God, we thank you for our church family at DCPC. Even when we can't be together, we feel the love and support of that family and know that they are here for us and love us. And God, um, we thank you for each one of these children. We thank you for their hearts and their minds. and. I ask you, God, to open their hearts and their minds to the lesson of today and help them to know how deeply they are loved and cared for by you. Thank you for this time together, God. In your name we pray. Amen. So, boys and girls, today I am going to share with you one of my favorite books. This is a book that we've had in our family for a long time. Y'all remember that all my children are older now, but even though they are much older, I have saved all of our favorite children's books. And I'm so glad that I did because I wanted to dig a special one out for you today. So today I'm gonna share with you a book called Thank You God for Everything. And I hope you'll be able to see the pictures. It tells a story of a little girl trying to figure out how to thank God and what she should thank God for and it tells her, it shows her going about her day and noticing things that she can thank God for. And in this time of the coronavirus, we all have a lot more time on our hands. We're not going to school and work. We're not having play dates with friends, which makes us really sad, but it also makes us slow down and notice things in our world that maybe we wouldn't ordinarily notice. I've been doing a lot of that. So I hope that you are too. So listen to the story. And then I hope that you can go about your day to day looking for ways and places to thank God. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Dad said that every single morning. This got Daisy thinking, what should I thank God for? I don't know, Mom replied. Look around and think about what God has given you. But it's such a big world. 
where should I start? Start right where you are, Mom said. You'll think of lots of things. So Daisy's journey began. First, Daisy thought about all the things she loved. Thank you, God, she said, for each day that I wake up and all the things I get to do. And if you look at the pictures, it shows her waking up, spending time with her grandmother, playing with a brother, doing art, playing the piano. It just shows her being thankful for all the things she does in a normal day. Thank you, God, for all the people I meet in my life. Thank you, God, for all the big animals, tiny little insects, and all sorts of living things. Thank you, God, for giving us all the breath of life no matter how different we are. This is kind of a funny page. This page made me laugh, all the different noses of all the creatures in the world. Thank you, God, for the peace I feel in my heart from Mother Earth. Thank you, God, for your great spirit that I see everywhere in the rocks and flowers and colorful sky. Thank you, God, for letting me see the world with new eyes. The more I look for things to be thankful for, the more things I find. Thank you, God, for being my beloved friend, even when I'm feeling sad or lonely or afraid. That's a really important message today, isn't it? When things are going crazy in our world and nothing is normal, we need to know that God is with us. And Daisy recognizes that. She says, thank you, God, for being with me when I'm afraid. Thank you, God, for being everywhere all day and all night. Thank you, God, that everything I see brings me closer to you. With her new eyes, Daisy realized that there would always be something to be thankful for. And with this, her journey brought her back to her mom and dad. So they asked her, what did you find to thank God for? Where should I even begin? Daisy smiled. Thank you, God, for everything. The end. So children, I need to wrap this up, but I have two little assignments for you. I don't usually give you homework from Sunday school, but today I'm going to. Assignment number one, when you wake up tomorrow morning or when you woke up today, say thank you God for this beautiful day and then as you go about your day when you're playing with your brothers and sisters or eating your meals with your parents when you're taking a walk with your family just in everything you do today open your eyes big and wide to all the things in our world that we have to be thankful for, whether that be a beautiful tree or flower, or maybe your puppy, or um, your grandmother, or a neighbor. Um, just open your eyes to those around you and everything around you and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for everything. 
And then I have a second assignment for you. Um, years ago, when Pastor Robert first came to our church, he taught a Sunday school class. And um, in, in the lesson, he encouraged um, each one of us to have a cross or um, something similar that was a representation of Jesus in a central part of our home, something that we um, would remind us of Jesus' love for us that we would see all the time throughout our day. And I love that idea. We, at that time, our family had numerous crosses in various places in the house, but I didn't have one right in the heart of our home. And the heart of our home is our kitchen table where we share meals together. And um, right after Pastor Robert encouraged us to do that, I went home and I found my favorite cross. This cross was given to me by um, one of my dearest friends from my childhood, a friend named Jane. And um, it's always been very special to me because of um, the special friendship I have with her. And it was in my bedroom. And I decided, after hearing that from Pastor Robert, to bring this cross um, downstairs. And I placed it right smack dab in the middle of our um, dining table where we eat all of our meals. And it just serves as a constant reminder that Jesus is at the center of our lives. He should be at the center of our lives. And um, his love for us... And God's love for us is an unconditional love that knows no boundaries. And when we gather for our meals each night, and this cross is at the center, um, it helps us remember that we are grounded in Jesus' love for us. And in these tough times, we have never needed that reminder more than we need it now. So here's my second homework assignment. Today... I want you to ask your mom or dad or whoever might be taking care of you if you can go on Pinterest and Google kids crafts with crosses. And there are hundreds of ideas for all these very cool different ways you can make a cross. Everything from using Cheerios or Fruit Loops to little pieces of tissue paper or buttons or um, rocks, maybe some stones, something from um, something from nature. But look at that and pick out um, something that appeals to you and make a cross for your family that you can keep at the center of your table um, during this tough period and hopefully always. And I hope that it will have as much meaning for your family as it has for us. Um, so children thank you so much for listening to me today this has been helpful to me to feel like i've been able to connect with you and just always remember god loves you so deeply he's with you every minute and also remember your dcpc church family loves you um we it's easy to uh, take for granted all these important parts of our lives, our church, our schools, um, and it's good to slow down for a minute and um, recognize how important our church is to us. I have been missing our minister so much and missing all my church family, but I'm so grateful for the different ways they're reaching out to us and staying connected with us. So know that um, your church family loves you, I love you, and most importantly, God loves you. Have a wonderful, beautiful day of spring and remember to thank God for everything.